Hey guys! Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing the book scenario tag. I saw this one recently on the channel Bookables. I can't remember her um, actual name, but you should check her out. I'll put her video or her channel in, down, in the down bar. I really enjoy her channel, so it's it's a good. She's a good booktuber to check out. Um, so let's get into the tag. Okay, so the first question is. You have to get rid of all of your books except for one from each of these genres. Contemporary, fantasy, nonfiction, and another genre of your choosing. What book do you choose from each genre? So the first one was contemporary, and I don't I don't know, I'm really bad with knowing what the contemporary genre includes, but I'm gonna go with the book that I chose because I think it's contemporary. And that is Ready OK by Adam Cadre. And a lot of people, I don't know a ton of people who've read this. I mean, all of my friends have read it because we all sort of passed this book around in high school and it was something that we, you know, all the one-liners in it and things like that, we would talk about all the time. We used them in conversation. They were our little inside jokes. Um, this is a fantastic book. I don't believe that he has written any other books, but um, this was definitely one of those defining books of my teenage years. And even now, it's as funny and as good as it was then, and I would definitely recommend this to anyone if you can get your hands on it. It is sort of hard to get a hold of, because even when I was in high school, it had been discontinued or it wasn't being sold widely. And I think that we all got our copies off of eBay, but um, yeah, this is definitely one of my all-time favorite books, and I would choose this one for contemporary. The next genre is fantasy, and I know this sounds like a cop-out, but I would choose the Harry Potter series. And I don't care if it says book, it's a series. I would totally choose all of these, and I would fight somebody tooth and nail if they told me I could only keep one Harry Potter book. I would keep the Harry Potter series. And I think it goes without saying as to why I would keep it. Um, the last one is, oh, well not last, there's two more genres. So, nonfiction. I actually had a lot of trouble with nonfiction because I was like, I don't know that I've read a lot of nonfiction books that weren't like research stuff for my thesis back in college or anything like that. Um, but then as I was sort of perusing my bookshelves for other books for this question, I realized that there was one that I'm very, very fond of um, that is considered nonfiction, and that's The Unlikely Disciple by Kevin Roos. And this is actually, this is probably one of my top ten, you know, books that have had an impact on my life, um, which I'll, I want to do a video about about that, but I'm still trying to narrow that down. Um, but this is definitely a fantastic book. It's about a, a guy who went to, he goes to Brown University, and he takes a semester, like everybody takes a semester abroad where he is, and instead of going abroad, he decides to go to Liberty University and sort of study their culture undercover. And it's really interesting the sort of things that he finds out that he wasn't expecting to find out. And, and it's just, it's interesting. I went to school not very far from Liberty and we had our own sort of conceptions. A lot of them, after reading this, misconceptions about the school. So this is definitely really interesting and not just, you know, as an insight into liberty and the people who go there, but just an insight into people. So this is a really great one and I would definitely hold on to it. The last one is a genre of my choosing and I choose classic, classics, I guess, I guess that's a genre. And um, I would choose The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. I don't think it's a secret that I am a huge fan of all things Alexander Dumas. Um, but this was definitely my favorite book of his, and actually the first one that I read of his. I know everybody usually starts with The Three Musketeers, but for some reason, actually I'm not going to say for some reason, I watched the movie in high school, or a couple different um, versions of the movie, and I really liked them, and so I was like, I want to read that book. And so I picked it up, and let me tell you, after I read the book, which is a big book, it's probably one of the biggest books, if not the biggest book I've ever read, the movies don't hold a candle to the book because they leave so much out. They leave out an entire, like, quarter of the book. So if you've never read this or if you've watched a movie or even if you've read the abridged version of this, do yourself a favor and read the whole thing because it is fantastic. It is definitely probably my favorite book ever. Okay, so the next question, let me get my little question sheet here. Um, 
you're at a bookstore and you hear a teenager telling their mom they don't like to read, but their mom is insisting they pick something. You walk over and recommend a book you think is great for people who aren't big into reading. What book is it? First of all, I would never walk up and be a part of that discussion because rude. Second of all, how do you know what a kid's going to like? You don't know what their interests are. But if I had to pick something, I would probably blanket say either The Hunger Games or the Harry Potter series because I think that they're both very accessible and they have things that pretty much anybody can get into. Plus, you know, if they don't like them but they want to see more, they can watch the movies. I know I'm not, you know, I'm not advocating that the movies are better than the books. The books are definitely better. But if you're not a big reader, you know, you read one but you want to know more about it, you watch the movies and decide if you want to read the rest of them. I guess that's what I'd recommend. <laughs> okay, so the third question is, you're not feeling yourself and you need to pick me up. Which book do you choose to put you in a great mood? That would be any of the Lauren Willig um, Pink Carnation books. This is just the one that I happen to have on hand, um, which is The Mischief of the Mistletoe. These are just so fun and they're a little formulaic and you sort of, you do sort of need to start with the first one and keep going, otherwise a lot of things don't make sense. But they're so fun to read and I always tear through these, so I would definitely pick one of these up because they always make me smile. Um, the th bleh, fourth question is, you go back in time to, to, for a day to your teenage years, what book would you most likely have caught yourself reading? That's a number of things. I would definitely say Harry Potter because I read a lot of Harry Potter when I was a teenager. Definitely this book, Ready OK, because I think I read this at least twice when I was in high school, um, and it was something we talked about and referenced all the time. But on top of that, I would probably also say Caroline B. Cooney's books, and this is actually the... Um, it's called Out of Time, but I think it's like the Our Side of Time series or something. But I read a lot of Caroline B. Cooney. I think in middle school we were assigned, um, oh god, it was something about a stop sign where she steals a stop sign and then somebody dies and then she has to deal with the consequences of it or something like that. That was the first Caroline B. Cooney book that I read and then I really liked her writing style so I just kept reading stuff by her. Um, and then the this like out of time series or whatever it was called was definitely my favorite of all of hers. And I keep thinking that I'm going to reread it. I am mad if anybody's wondering that this book is bigger than these because these are all the same kind and then this is the hardback book because I think I had these in a different one because these have never been read and then I bought them at the same time that I bought this one because it was only out in hardback. Laughs. Annoying! I'll have to find a better set of those because I really, really enjoyed that series. Um, okay, so... Number five, your friend surprises you with a four-day trip and you have one hour to pack. Which book do you choose to bring with you on the way? Well, first of all, if we're driving, I am not reading because I get horrible, horrible car sickness when I try to read or do anything like that requires my eyes to be off the road um, for any number of any amount of time. Um, so I wouldn't be reading if we're driving, but if we're flying. I would choose A Clockwork Angel because that's what I'm reading right now and it's a pretty good sized book. I mean, I'm reading it pretty fast, but um, I would pick this one or the next one in the series depending on if I had finished this one by the time because this is actually as good as everybody says it is. So then, let's see. Your house has been robbed. Don't worry, everyone is safe, but your bookshelf has been raided. What books do you really hope what book do you really hope is safe? And I keep I, I keep talking about this book and it's funny cuz I've never talked about it on the channel before, but it would be Ready Okay by Adam Cadre because this book is again hard to come by. It's not an easy book to get your hands on, but it is something that I am super attached to and my copy actually has a lot of like highlighting and stuff in it because I highlighted all the things that I thought were hilarious and that we joked about in high school. I think I even had like, yeah, I made like a little key in the back or page numbers for things that like quotes and things. Um, but yeah, this book is near and dear to my heart and I would be really upset if it was missing. Um, and the last question is, your friend borrows a book and returns it in awful condition. Do you just pretend you haven't noticed, ask them to repurchase it, or secretly do the same to something of theirs? I would never do the same to something of theirs, just not that kind of person. Um, 
I don't know that I would necessarily pretend it didn't happen or ask them to repurchase it. I would probably be like, what happened to this? Did, did your dog get a hold of it? Did you put it through a paper shredder? What, what happened? So I'd probably say something to them, but if they just sort of were like, oh, you know, like, just wear and tear, I would probably just shrug it off. It's it's just a book, it's not that big of a deal, and most of them can be replaced, so I don't think that I would be too, too upset with my friend over a book. So that is it, and I hope that you enjoyed it. I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these books if you've read them, and if you've read Ready OK, totally let me know, because I really am interested um, to see how many people have read this book before, because I love it. I just love it. All right. So I will see you guys later, and bye. Sometimes I do weird.